take over the city, yeah, baby. Follow my lead, everybody get ready. All my girls are with me tonight. Let's turn it up now. Hey, y'all, it's Jamie here. And I'm Abby. Abby, I cannot believe we're doing this. I know. I'm, I'm so, so excited. excited. Me too. We're sitting here at the Virgin Hotel in Nashville. I think we need our audience to know who we are. So why don't you go ahead and start introducing yourself? Where did you and John meet? Everything. We want to know it all. So I'm Jamie Robinson, better known as John's better half. Uh, Yes, of course. (laughs) I'm originally from South Louisiana, a small town called Homa, Louisiana, Berg, Louisiana, actually, which is south of Homa. But nobody knows it. So (laughs) I always say the big town of Homa. I went to school at Nickel State. And that's actually where I met John. Thibodeau, Louisiana is where it's at. And he was a coach at the university. Not so sure if that was legal since I was still a student. (laughs) Oh my gosh, that's okay. I was 19, he was 24. I was actually a bartender at Bubba's 2, which is a little sports bar right in, in the college town. We dated for, I think, a year and a half. Got engaged, married 10 months later. It was a whirlwind. Wait, so how old were you when you got married? I was 22. Oh my gosh. Newly 22. 22 in October, got married in February. And this February will be 20 years. That's amazing. It's fate. I know. Originally, he told me that we would be moving around because he wanted to be a coach. And unexpectedly, he got the opportunity to interview with Bill Belichick at the Patriots. And four months later, he moved me from Louisiana to Atlanta. Oh, my gosh. Because he got the regional scouting job for the Patriots. That's and crazy. It's it exciting. Was, it was crazy. And we moved around about six times. And here we are. Yes. And it's been amazing. We have two beautiful girls, Taylor and Bailey, who are 15 and 12. And it's been nuts. It's That's been awesome. Yes. Yeah, so now here we are. Yes. Tell us a little bit about you. I will tell you this. That you were my lifesaver when we moved here because (laughs) when you move from Tampa to Nashville, not knowing anything about Nashville, I relied heavily on Nashville Guru. Yes. Oh, I love hearing that. I know. I love that. Yeah. So I'm one of the co-founders of Nashville Guru. I started it with my husband. He was my fiance at the time when we started it. And you're a unicorn. You're from here. I am. I've been here since fourth grade. My husband's born and raised. He likes to throw that in my face that I was not (laughs) born here. I have two children. My daughter is six. Her name's Jessa. And I have a almost six month old little Mm. boy who's just adorable and precious. precious. They Um, both are. Yeah. So yes, I'm from Nashville. Josh and I met in a very Nashville way. We went out with friends and I didn't know him. And we ended up in a late night in Printer's Alley and hit it off. And Fiddle That's and, awesome. Fiddle and Steel is the exact bar that we were at. <laughs> That's not here now, is no? it? No, I didn't it's think gone. so. It used to be right next to Lonnie's. And so since that night, we just hit it off. And then we got engaged and got married. How many years? We've been married 10 years this October. Oh, so, the, yeah. October what? October 1st. That's my birthday. What? Yes. No way. <laughs> not even kidding. Oh, my God. Okay, we're going to celebrate <laughs> we are together. Absolutely meant to be Who together. Who do I pick, you or Josh? I think you. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. We knew it. Well, oh speaking gosh. of knowing it, I'll never forget the first time I met you. Oh, my God. Some of the, the Titans employees came to me and was like, we have this idea about this lifestyle podcast, and would you be interested? And I'm like, well, you kind of know I can talk to a pole. I mean, it doesn't take much out of me, especially if I have a glass of champagne in my hand like I do yes. now. But as soon as you sat down and we could not stop talking, I was like, I know. Done. Even I know. Done. Even now everyone's was like, you guys knew click. each other, right? Before <laughs> this. And we're like, no. We're just instant. We are gonna have instant a blast. besties. <laughs> so tell us about our guest. We had so much fun. Caitlin Silver Howard. She is my neighbor turned best friend out of necessity. We are together every single day with our kids. We live on the same street. She's three doors down. She is like a light in this world, and I'm so glad she got to be on the podcast. We talked to her all about her life in New York City and how she worked for 
New York Fashion Week and put on that event. And then how her her husband ended up winning The Voice Germany, which took them out of New York City to Berlin. And then they ended up in Nashville eventually. They actually launched a music company called Bookable in 2018. And so we talk all about that and what that is. And so we're just, we were so excited to have her on and she was amazing. She was great. I enjoyed her and I cannot wait to go sip some wine with y'all soon. (laughs) Yes, you're in. (laughs) Caitlin, we're so excited you're here. So start by telling us a little bit about where you grew up, where you went to college, and how you ended up in New York City initially. Well, thank you guys for having me. First and foremost, it's very exciting to be here. So I grew up in Milwaukee, Wisconsin and went to college at the University of Wisconsin, big football Uh uh, team, (laughs) and absolutely just loved my experience there. The the people are incredible, the fanfare, the passion. Wisconsin in general is just a wonderful place to live. And, Mm -hmm. you know, I, I attribute a lot of the good things in my life back to people that I've met, both growing up in Milwaukee and at the University of Wisconsin. So really really good good energy good people what'd you major in i majored in communications okay um radio television film they did not have podcasts oh (laughs) here you go (laughs) otherwise i think i would have jumped on that bandwagon that's awesome yeah and i had a minor in history and i think i graduated and felt very inspired but also lost at the same time abby i know that you had more of a specific degree that you were going for yes but you know, I think in hindsight, I think it was the best degree that I could have gotten because it really forced me to figure out what I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. And post college, I actually took a year off and I traveled around the world, which for anyone ever that needs that break in their yeah. life, that was probably one of the coolest things that do it while you can. I have yeah. to ask a minor in history. What I've always wondered that, like, if you minor in history, what, what would you? What would you do with that? Well, a lot of people go to law school if they major Is that in right? history. Yeah, it seems to be a, a random cor- correlation between it's kind of random. law and <laughs> yeah, or they be- they become professors or gotcha. they you know study you know intricate parts of history and then they project the future. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Very interesting. I don't know. I've I always my, wondered that. Yeah, it's true. I know it is kind of random. My my father is <laughs> a huge history buff. Is he? So, I think that amongst other things. That's awesome. Um, so I think that was a, a big driver for me. And I just, yeah. I loved it, but it was, it was kind of, it was random. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? It wasn't um, strategic gotcha. at that point. Oh, that's but yeah. awesome. Where, where did you go to college? I went to Nickel State. It's okay. a really small college in Thibodeau, Louisiana. I'm from South Louisiana. Yeah. And I majored in Fime U. Yeah. <laughs> But now we used to live in Boston. And that was one of the things that like growing up, you always think, what am I going to do with history? Mm -hmm. You know, history classes, why do I need to know this? But living in Boston, there's so much history up there. It's insane. And at that point was like, man, I wish I would have paid attention more. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you still can. That's the the best part of life. (laughs) You can still do it. Uh, But Boston's incredible. My parents met in Boston. Did they really? Yeah, it's an incredible city. I've spent a lot of time there. They can keep the snow. Yeah. (laughs) But I I love the city so much. It is. It's Uh special for sure. Oh, I grew up in Wisconsin, so snow is snow is my jam. And Nashville is a a a good mix of everything. It is. (laughs) It was great. When we had the snowstorm, what was that, back in February here in Nashville? You know, our our street wasn't plowed for a week. So I was offering my services of driving driving people to the grocery (laughs) store. (laughs) I was like, I grew up in this. I know how to do this. Yeah. Oh well, you're so scared. It's like with the snow, you know, I, I was petrified to drive in the snow when we first got there. I mean, I literally grew up on the bayou and then you take me to the North Pole. I actually asked John when we moved there, I said, am I going to need chains for my tires? <laughs> and he's like, you've got to be, or is that a serious question? I'm like, yes, it's a serious question. Yeah. Oh but now it's, of course, it's nothing, you know, to drive in it, but you're more worried about people here driving. Oh yeah. yeah. Cause they Versus don't understand yourself. how yeah. to drive. Yeah. Yes. It's, yeah, it's interesting. Driving I mean, the, the rain here. throws people off here. So <laughs> 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 oh, it's a little iffy. Okay. So you traveled for a year and yes. then what, 
What did that look like coming back? Did you just start interviewing? Did you move to a specific city? Yeah, so I think growing up in the Midwest, everyone's kind of, you you know, you go to a Big Ten school and then everyone moves to Chicago. Mm -hmm. That's just kind of a given. And after having traveled for a year, I just really felt the need to broaden my horizons and what that meant and my my cousin actually was a dancer in the New York City Ballet and so oh, I wow. had which is incredible is. and I had been out to visit her several times over the years and just kind of started falling more and more in love with New York City mm. so just decided to you know take that leap of faith and move there without a job and figure out what was next for me so it was kind of whimsical but kind of calculated all at the same time but best decision I ever made so yeah I think it was so you just started applying for jobs and like yeah it was you know back in the day of people posted jobs on Craigslist (laughs) (laughs) Craigslist. good lord (laughs) and you had to read the newspaper I'm totally aging myself right now but um (laughs) Yeah, and just, you know, word of mouth, friends of a friend. I ultimately ended up getting my first event planning job at Clinique in corporate Estee Lauder. Um, But it was a friend, again, everything comes back to Wisconsin for me. It was a friend who was working there Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, had gotten my resume and put me forward. And yeah. So what types of events were you doing for them? So that one was interesting because we did, part of it was events for a lot of the Clinique salespeople all over the country as like big rewards got these, they would go to Orlando and there'd be a thousand people Mm -hmm. and they would learn all about the new products. Mm -hmm. And so they were big like launch events, but they were also kind of like rewards for the people that um, were doing well within the company. Mm -hmm. So we would do those, but then we also did some of the Estee Lauder family private events as well. So it was like a good mix of really big massive production and I then never also realized very they, were, they were linked together yeah so Estee Lauder owns maybe like a hundred different beauty companies no kidding yeah it's crazy they own Clinique they own Mac they own wow. I mean it goes on yeah and on yeah, and on. yeah. Um, prescriptives do you guys remember oh, oh, remember that? Yes. <laughs> I'm oh like gosh. I'm still mourning the loss of prescriptives <laughs> they have the that. best foundation <laughs> yes. ever um, mm-hmm. I actually think you still can order it online so yeah, you walk into a Nordstrom, they own gotcha. 90%. Oh, That's what right. I did not know that. Yeah. yeah, but it was insane because there was in the Estee Lauder building, which is right on Fifth Avenue in the corner of Central Park, mm-hmm. at the bottom of it, they had a company store. So we got 50% off <gasps> the company store. So you would wow. go down there and it was like Christmas. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it was amazing. Wow. Oh my gosh. That's um, awesome. Yeah. They own like Joe Malone, the candles. Okay, I mean, yeah, they own yeah. like everything. So yeah, for, wow. for a couple of years there, my family got a lot of makeup they didn't <laughs> want. <laughs> <laughs> Christmas, birthday, Christmas, everything. Father's yes. Day. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. That's awesome. So one of the amazing. things that Abby told us about is he worked the fashion show week. How was that? And what, yeah. what did you do for that? New York Fashion Week, I think over the course of the last 15 years has taken on many different iterations. Most people think about it in Bryant Park and the big tents. Mm-hmm. I actually worked with a couple brands uh, before I worked in-house at um, IMG, which owns New York Fashion Week. I did like the Lacoste show, which was always oh, super fun. fun. And they gave away amazing Lacoste bags and hats and all the very fun things. I worked on Banaz Serifor, which is she's a, a big designer. You know, I did a couple of like the actual fashion shows. Mm-hmm. But then when I worked for New York Fashion Week, they had moved it into this kind of old warehouse that we would take over. And I did a lot of work with the partners, some beauty like Tresemme a lot of the sponsors that would help kind of build all the sets and make sure that the designers can afford to show there and those type of things. And the sponsors that worked on that were anything from papyrus cards Mm -hmm. to, you know, smart water. Like it just kind of whatever we were, um, you know, pulling in at the time to, to make those work. But yeah, we, we built all of the, the runways and the backstage and kind of the build out of it. So we did all of that soup to nuts. We had a very small team, which mm-hmm. is only ironic because, you know, when you see 
the pictures the and yeah. the production like you can't imagine that there's only a you know a handful of people yeah. behind the scenes running That's crazy. but we worked with amazing production companies and every fashion designer has their own people that they bring in mm-hmm. for their shows so every um, designer gets booked a certain time slot uh-huh. and, and whatnot so how many years did you do that for so I only did that that specific job for two years. Okay. I kind of jumped around a lot within my gotcha. event planning and marketing career. I love it. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah, it was super cool. But living in New York and anyone that's ever done any of the bigger cities, mm-hmm. you know, New York, LA, DC, Chicago, what you work at these big companies, they're just, they just throw you in, you know, it's like yeah. kind of sink or swim and they're super fast paced and they're very intense, but you learn so much mm-hmm. at such a young age. Mm-hmm. And I think it's like boot camp. Yeah. <laughs> for real life. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Which is cool. That's crazy. Yeah. That's awesome. Before we move on, because you left New York shortly after that, what what's like your favorite restaurant in New York that like you have to go back to? Okay, so there is a man named Frank, and he owns several restaurants throughout the city in Brooklyn. There's a restaurant called Frank. There's a restaurant <laughs> called Little Frankie's. <laughs> oh, great. There's a restaurant called Supper. So Supper is like my favorite Italian restaurant in New York City. He is incredible. He has a bunch of others. Mm-hmm. Um, different iterations of it now but just some of the best italian food oh my gosh so fresh and just a Yum. solid go-to every time you're there yes. so go I to go it. to supper <laughs> <laughs> so what pulled you away from new york initially correct me if i'm wrong is not to change the subject from no. you because you're amazing but your <laughs> husband nick howard had the opportunity to go on the voice germany is that why you guys left initially Yeah, so actually, ironically, I had just gotten my dream job in New York. I was hired to be the head of marketing and events at Hearst, which Mm -hmm. owns everything from Cosmo to Good Housekeeping to, you know, they own 30 magazines and also have a huge media department. So I'd just gotten a job there. And I remember I had this incredible boss named Lily Root. And, you know, I kind of casually said to her, oh, because she was asking me, oh, where's your husband or what is he doing? I'm, um, you know, I said he's a singer songwriter, and the voice in Germany just asked him to be on it, but he's British and he doesn't really know German, so That's like crazy. I kind of swept it under the rug. Yeah, a little yeah, bit, yeah. You know? like, this won't happen. Yeah, I was like, you know, he's really good. Like I obviously yeah. his number one fan. However, I didn't think much of it. So basically, from an insider perspective, The Voice and a lot of these shows go after pre-existing musicians. Some are just walk off the street, but sometimes they're like, you're doing really well. Yeah. You're at this level. We can help project you to this level. So they ask them to come under. So that's kind of what happened. My husband, Nick, had been garnering a pretty cool following, specifically in Germany, Austria, Switzerland. And so the voice came to him and they just said, would you ever want to mm-hmm. audition? And he said, yes. And they said, the only caveat is you have to learn German in two months. Oh, my that's gosh. In, oh, in two months? Oh, <gasps> yes. I didn't know it was um, that soon. Yeah, it was crazy. So the, the reason he had to learn German, though, was the speaking was all in German. Okay. The singing was 99% in English. He never had to sing a German song. Oh, this, he oh, didn't. Okay. Yeah, and most okay. of the contestants sang in English. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah. You haven't watched I... every, every episode <laughs> of Nick Howard. <laughs> Season two of The Voice Germany escaped me somehow back in 2012. I don't know I if we can be friends anymore. I in German. <laughs> He has sung in German, but not for the show. So, um, yeah, so that was crazy. So I, at the time, I was living my best life in New York City um, in Hearst Tower, and he was living in Germany in Berlin, and they got him tutors. He used Rosetta Stone. You know, they only spoke to him in German while taping, like, the initial parts of the show. I think there's, he's highly intelligent and picked it up obviously super fast and then you know ultimately week by week he was getting through to the next round and I was always flying out from New York on Thursday night on the red eye and landing Friday morning and he would be on the show Friday afternoon wow. and then he'd win and then I'd get back on the plane oh my and gosh. go back to New York you got a lot of frequent flyer miles yes. right yeah exactly. <laughs> our children are not going to college but I did get to go, <laughs> I did get to, go to Germany a lot that's for sure so it was a super exciting time and we you know 
my my boss Lily that I brought up before was very supportive because this is you know she she looked at me at one point and she was like this is a once in a lifetime oh, that's yeah. opportunity right yeah you, you have to go you have to support mm-hmm. him and then yeah he ultimately ended up winning the entire that's thing insane. which was crazy I still get goosebumps so when awesome. I talk about so it so is he like the Justin Bieber of Germany <laughs> right now <laughs> I'm going to say yes. <laughs> really? No. Oh, no. <laughs> oh just, a little. A little. I am very funny. gullible. Hey, <laughs> no. And Maybe like the joke. That's what I, yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, cheers to the Justin cheers. Bieber of Germany. <laughs> <laughs> I love that, by the way. Yeah, so he he ended up winning, and I made the very hard decision of leaving my job oh, and moving over to Berlin for a year. And it was incredible, but the only thing was he was fluent in German by the time I got there. Oh, wow. So I didn't get to really indulge in learning a new Mm -hmm. language. Most Germans are offered and do learn English growing up. So they just wanted to speak English to me. And I was trying to speak German to them. So it was quite, you know, problematic, but all, all good things. So how did you do coming in with being his wife? And now he's a star, his fame. How did you handle that? Yeah, it's interesting because when I was on my way over here, I was thinking a very similar question to ask you. <laughs> That's Being why I'm John's asking. wife. Yes, it is. <laughs> It's interesting, too, because being an event planner, I've always been behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. I'm not forward facing Mm -hmm. in the limelight. And he is that person that should be on TV and should Uh be in front of the camera. And, you know, to support that and to have the wherewithal to understand what needs to go into that um, is very exciting but also when real life sets in it's it can be scary Mm -hmm. it can be exhausting it can be you know very tricky for trying to manage both people's expectations and what they want and what they need especially living in a different country Mm -hmm. in a different language I think too when you're uprooted in which I'm sure you have been several times times (laughs) in your career it takes a second to adjust Mm -hmm. your mentality and to understand I'm doing this because this is the goal in life right Right. and to get behind that but your personal needs if you don't address them and this is all hindsight is easier in 2020 Mm -hmm. if you don't address them then they can compound and it can be more difficult at the end it's true do you feel that way as well absolutely we've been in this for 20 years now and it's always been so exciting you know and he was an area scout regional scout national scout it was just wow he keeps going up and being a gm at the beginning he never really thought about it but whenever it became real it was so exciting and then we get to nashville and it was like Boom, everybody knows who he is. Mm -hmm. You know, we're going through the grocery store and people screaming, tighten up. And (laughs) at first it was so fun. But then after a year, it just got like, I just want to go to the store and you know, with my husband and Mm -hmm. it, it did, it took some time to adjust. Now I could care less. Right. You know, but at the beginning it was it was hard. Mm -hmm. It really was. I made a very for better or for worse odd decision from the beginning that I did not want to be in the public eye Mm -hmm. um, with the show so I was never on camera just because I wasn't comfortable with it and it wasn't about me it was Mm -hmm. about him right right and that also created some odd speculation of like oh does he have a girlfriend no but more just like the questions like does he have a girlfriend oh then they found out he has a wife and like why is she not yeah you know what I mean and it it was more personal it was just it was my decision right and we still struggle with that we have two little girls Mm -hmm. and you know he has a very public facing music career and I'm sometimes I'm comfortable sharing things about the girls and sometimes I'm not and it changes constantly and so it is I think to your point like all of a sudden you're thrown into this line like yeah and it it can be scary and daunting and the crazy thing is I never expect it to feel that way you right. know what I mean I always expect it to be like oh this is and I am so proud of him and where he is and how he became a GM right but it surprised me so much that 
at one time, I went and saw a therapist about it. <laughs> Girl, was the best decision I, I ever prob- made. I probably should have. So you're one step above me. Because... No, it's, it's it was it was it was challenging. Yeah. It was. It's good for you for taking hold of that because yeah. if you hadn't had done that you might be in a different place right right? you have to exactly and and I think it is I'm sure Abby and Josh know this too I mean they own a business together and they work together constantly and when Nick won the voice I was part of his management team and so we were working together and living together Mm -hmm. and you're just together all the time and you're trying to capitalize on mm-hmm. this once in a lifetime opportunity right and yeah. so every decision felt so heavy and so important and that's taxing as well yeah. too you know yeah. there's just no reprieve and then I think when you are able to step out of it and say okay life's gonna go on yes we're it's gonna a long be okay yeah. not yeah. everything is so serious yeah but it is in those moments it is especially when you're working towards a goal that this yeah. this has been your goal your entire life mm-hmm. and if you don't do it right it mm-hmm. could all go away mess it up. yes yeah. yeah yeah so I think that was the most it was scary you know but it yeah. was exciting it, it's the same thing right? absolutely absolutely do y'all go to germany a lot we do we do obviously not during covid times <laughs> but we are over there a lot germany austria switzerland the netherlands oh. he still has a phenomenal fan base over there who have supported him you know throughout the, almost the last 10 years so oh that's incredible it's really cool and such good people over there that's too. awesome yeah. so did good you have him. to stay over there for a certain period of time after the voice or could you because you guys end up back in LA yeah so we we were kind of on the road for a good a solid year after he won the voice okay. with all the tours that they had booked and promotional I think here in the U.S. they do it every six months over there it's just once a year so it oh, was okay. like he was the for the a winner whole year, for a focus. whole year okay. yes I mean we got to do some incredible things too they they flew us to Beijing he did the the voice of the world oh, they stop. flew in yeah it was super cool so it wasn't just Germany it was more global that's awesome as well. that's so um yeah so we were there for a year and then we decided he wanted to do bits and pieces of albums in we lived in London for a while and we li- moved out to LA and moved there oh, wow. um, for a couple months and this was just kind of when Airbnb was on the rise so it was just so nice because we didn't really have a home and we were somewhat nomadic and just would pick up in different cities wow, with our suitcases so and his guitar. And, and I'm, I'm assuming y'all didn't have children yet at that time. We did not. <laughs> so how cool is that? Wow. Yeah. Super cool. Yeah, it was, it was whimsical. And while we were on a tour with, you know, a bigger artist that Nick was opening for, I found out that I was pregnant, <gasps> which was Aww. so fun and continued to do different tours. And then I think we were eight months pregnant and we happened to be in Madison, Wisconsin, where I went to school. And I kind of had to roll out of the tour bus because I was so <laughs> pregnant. And I was like, maybe we should find a home. Yes. <laughs> so you're like, where am I going to have this baby? I was like, where do I live? Oh, <laughs> my God. So did you come to Nashville at that point? So it's funny because Nick had recorded parts of albums down here throughout his career. He's got gotcha. seven, six and a half albums. Like, so it was, we had been down here a lot. Yeah. And every time we came, we just fell more and more in love with the city and the people and the ease, especially mm-hmm. coming from all these major cities where, you know, life is pretty chaotic. Yes. <laughs> and so when Madeline, our, our six-year-old, was six months old, we came down here and looked at about 50 houses, looked at all of the different neighborhoods in Nashville, our poor realtor, <laughs> <laughs> and then moved back to New York and decided we were going to stay in New York for a little bit longer. And that's when I worked for New York Fashion Week. Okay. And then two years later, we were just done and we called our poor realtor up again and oh, said like, oh these she's people. like oh yeah she's an amazing i'm sitting here human. thinking wow they had 50 houses for sale uh, right yes <laughs> right now wow. right now they're like do you want this one? Oh, it's gone yes. yeah <laughs> you want this one? Oh, it's gone. Yeah, exactly that's <laughs> so true we live in 12 south okay. uh, neighborhood and we fell in love with it the first time we came and then ultimately even just two years later ended up paying way more money for a house yes but we ended up on the best street ever. And best street ever. <laughs> would have never <laughs> been neighbors. So. I know. Y'all so must have a go. lot of fun. Oh. I think I'll be coming over a lot. Oh, yeah. Please. Uh-huh. <laughs> you're, you're invited every you're day. In. Thank you. <laughs>
<laughs> I'm in the club. We would love to. <laughs> it's very fun. So we ended up moving down about four years ago. Oh, and wow. Yeah. And we had our second daughter here in Nashville. Mm-hmm. And we just love the city so much. Oh, We're oh we love it obsessed with yes it. how long have you guys been here i think we've been here for six years i think this is our sixth season if i'm yeah. not mistaken i don't know it all blends together I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure it does like something about football yeah it just it just all collides <laughs> growing up in the midwest i think for us when we were looking to relocate elsewhere you know we wanted that kind of that community that we Mm -hmm. knew that our children would grow up with humility and kindness and you know collaboration yes and you know there's only a certain number of cities that really embody that in the U.S. that also don't have the chaos right yeah so and I think that Nashville just was calling our name for so many reasons not just musically for Mm -hmm. Nick's perspective but just from a community and a you You're know meant to be here I with know. me every day every day of your every day of your life do y'all get together Soul a lot sisters. oh yeah daily 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 yeah. um, so are the girls about the same age as uh your daughter jessa and jessa. maddie are mm-hmm. best besties well yeah. they're they're required to be even yeah if they, they don't have a choice they, they kind of fight like that. sisters they now do. we're like oh you're sisters yeah. <laughs> y'all are gonna love it so when we lived in massachusetts across the street our neighbors had girls the same exact age as our girls and then they had a son a couple of years later. But anyway, the girls are still best friends. Aww. And when we moved there, our youngest was six months old, maybe even four months old. And then our oldest was four. And we were just on vacation with them this year. And it had been 18 months since we've seen them. We always made it a point every six months to see, to each, see other. each other. So oh, it was nice. just when we left them bald our eyes out all of us even the dad not john john is just like y'all are y'all are silly i'm not gonna say the word he said but (laughs) but it's it's such a connection to have neighbors like that and it's you feel so lucky raising kids together like you have to have it it's so it would be so lonely without it especially life-saving i think for for not only the kids but for for us those play dates those wine play dates are the best Uh the best Totally. <laughs> <Necessity>. <laughs> totally. I'm assuming your husband probably travels a lot. Well, he did pre-COVID. <laughs> he did pre-COVID. Post-COVID, yeah. we've been all at home yep. a lot. <laughs> yeah, seen a lot of them. Because um, we were joking with our neighbor this past week. I was joking whenever I would introduce him. I'm like, yeah, he co-raised my children. Because <laughs> yeah, John traveled so much. Yeah, I'm like, I'm sure. he was the one that went sledding with them because I would not go sledding. And, you know, like it was, it's such a neat connection that the whole family's both families have yeah yeah. Oh, yeah that's so sweet i know when you find those those special people in your life and the the special connections you just you, have you to hang hold, on you to hang them because you you get to pick your we call it our family right yeah. like you you oh get to gosh. choose like who you want to be a part of your daily life especially yes. if you don't have any immediate family lives here so abby and josh and Jessica and judah mm. are our family it's true. you know so it's I'm true. Crying. You know. <laughs> oh that's so sweet <laughs> I have some so, so she needs to drink. She well, needs how to many drink. years have y'all did i ask this question already i repeat myself we a lot. met when you were <laughs> pregnant with micah so it's been three over three yeah. three and a half yeah four years three and oh yeah. that's awesome because everyone told me caitlin is so fun you're gonna love to party with her blah 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 and then the first time <laughs> i met her she wasn't drinking and i was like what's going on <laughs> I was like, I heard, I was like, I heard you're so fun. And she was like, I'm pregnant. I was like, oh God. Um, And as much as we feel like we should hang out all day and drink together, we have to make money. Unfortunately, that's kind of Uh, how life works. It gets in the way. I know it does. It gets in the way of fun. But tell us about Bookable, which is your amazing events company. And you will explain it way better than I can. Oh, thank you. After the first year, after Nick won The Voice, he had done so much traditional touring at that point, you know, venues and more corporate sponsor type events. And then we we really wanted to kind of flip the script a little bit. We were like, how can we capitalize on his celebrity and make things more personable and make things more memorable so we had been hearing about a trend that had started in the U.S. and the U.K. and in Australia called house concerts. The thought process was you could bring a musician into your backyard, into your living room and have this magical moment and then the person that's bringing them in would either 
pay for it or mm-hmm. sell tickets to their friends. Oh, wow. And so we did that with him and we booked about 50 shows and it was just such so a cool, fun. intimate way uh-huh. of bringing live music into people's lives in a totally different fashion. Uh-huh. And, you know, as we all kind of move into... 2020 and 2021 and beyond you know I think there is this need of having these exciting different experiences that you know you're probably never going to get that again right Mm -hmm. and and if you have that person in your house or in your backyard or you know he did things that he would sing the first dance at someone's wedding so it was just like very highly curated very special Mm -hmm. moments and kind of seeing that trend when we moved to Nashville we decided to open our own company with that on the forefront we launched it in 2018 I was nine months pregnant <laughs> and oh wow brave you, do, you. Yes. Wow. our launch party I was oh yeah I <laughs> it was 100 degrees outside wow. here in Nashville and I was very large <laughs> uh, but you know what no time like the present right yeah. you got to just go for it in these moments we originally had built a platform that was connecting it was kind of like an Airbnb of live music so it connect fans with brands and Mm -hmm. um, people in the private sector and we still do that but we then during COVID really transitioned into bringing live music to Nashville safely we were able to do live music and wine tasting events outside all during COVID socially distanced and It was just, it was one of those ideas that Nick woke me up in the middle of the night and was like, we have to put the musicians back to work. And they're all sitting on their couch and they're all going crazy. (laughs) So we moved in October and we were waiting for our house to be ready. And we actually found a rent house in 12 South. And one night we were sitting on our porch and don't you know that there was a live band playing down our street? So uh, we sat on that porch and we had a fire going and I was like, okay, I want to move here. (laughs) (laughs) I'm still looking at real estate in 12 South. Come on. But it was so cool. So I'm like, hmm, I wonder if it was you. I know. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if that was us, but (laughs) we were somewhere doing it. We've done over 50 events during COVID, which is like insane. Yeah. But we did them really safely and we, you know, they were small. Yeah. At one point it was like 20 people, everyone masked. I mean, you were outside six feet apart. It was so safe. And being with Nashville Guru, like I know what events are going on and you guys Mm -hmm. were really like the first ones to pivot and be able to pull it off really well and do it safely. So it was like really impressive. Thank you. And Nashville Guru supported us from the beginning. So that was very (laughs) kind and sweet and really put us on the map. So I have you to thank for that. You know, when you scale Nashville back and you think about, okay, this city is built strategically on music yeah. and then you you know we've had all of these crazy things happen here in Nashville yeah. this, in the last like 18 months and for us it was just like how do we be part of the solution how do we mm-hmm. get people Make back happy. on stage yeah. and yeah and then allow people to come and hear live music because I think yeah. mentally too I think everyone needed a break like right. they needed a glass of wine and right. they needed to hear live music <laughs> so once we kind of figured out that we could do this small very safely we were able to kind of just keep it rolling and mm-hmm. we did it week after we, we were just like we're just Aww. gonna keep doing this until no one wants it anymore and we're we're still going and now we've kind of taken the idea that original one was called secret sounds which mm-hmm. we still do on thursdays over at white avenue studio and we've now taken that same idea and we do live from the rooftop at the kimpton hotel which is super magical oh, up there wow. so have you ever cool. been up there, there? yes it's I very it. it's gorgeous so that's kind of dreamy and we do similar you know live music and wine tastings so yeah it's just been great and a lot of companies will come to us and they'll say we're here now Nashville and we have this event and we need this type of musician so we do a lot of music curation as mm-hmm. well Nick being a musician and you know I come from the event planning world we can plan you know an entire event wow. we can just help place the musician so we kind of can do it all yeah we're soup to nuts and yeah uh, all all of the things and That's we have incredible. a lot of musical equipment in our garage yes you do <laughs> yes your car can barely fit in yeah. at this point. and it keeps growing Nick's like I just went to the guitar center and there's like a huge <laughs> oh, box gosh. you yeah. know <laughs> like we're gonna need a warehouse eventually so I know your events are so much fun how do you keep up work-life balance with two beautiful little girls and a husband and 
and at least you get to work together or you wouldn't see them. I, that That <laughs> is very true. That is very true. I don't know how we all balance it, but at least we have each other. <laughs> Having good women in your life is so important. Uh, as amen to that. We all know. Yes. I think it keeps us all sane and it reminds us that we're not the only ones going through the struggles of yes. daily life. Someone the other day asked me, what do you, what do you want under the next five years? And my answer was balance. You know, yeah. I think that's what we're all trying yeah. to achieve is how do I, you know, do a good job at my actual job, whether mm-hmm. that's being a full-time mother or owning a business mm-hmm. or trying to start a crazy business in the middle of a pandemic right. or, you know, trying to support our lifestyle and our our children and what does that mean and 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 for me it's really having good people in my life I really and not this is not meant to be in a mean way but I just don't have any room for people that don't support me at this point Mm -hmm. in my life and I don't know if that's not if that's getting older yeah yes keep it small and and keep it you know you want people that lift you up drama free yes I (laughs) do not deal with the drama Uh -uh. Because you just don't have enough time, right? No. You you have you have certain things that you carve out throughout the day. You're like, okay, this needs attention thirty yes. percent of the time. You know, like oh, the kids need to be fed. Yes. <laughs> like, well, listen, you when know? when your girls and your son becomes teenagers, there's a lot more drama in their life, so you don't have time for that drama Ooh. in your life. Oh, that's so true. So I'm like, just. <laughs> deal no. with it outside of me i i, I can't handle it i'm I actually can't. i'm actually really scared <laughs> i will no don't be ready. scared not it's ready. seriously like each stage of their lives it's been absolutely incredible and at every stage i'm like oh this is my favorite this is my favorite and oh, right now so this is my favorite yeah. because it's they're my little best friends, you know, yeah. and like my little one was going to come today. I say little. She's 12. Yeah. She was going to come today because she's she wanted to see everything until I told her how long we would be here. And she's like, <laughs> yeah, mom, I'll just see it later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but they're my best friends and yeah. it does get easy. They have their hiccups. John and Taylor were screaming at each other this morning trying to get ready and I'm mm. trying to curl my hair. I'm like, <laughs> y'all need to stop. You know? Like yeah. So it's it's fun. Motherhood is so much fun. It is so fun. Yeah. And I think sometimes when and Abby and I have each other as sounding boards, when it feels too much, you just have to take that step back and realize absolutely another day. It's absolutely. gonna be okay. You know, but I think it is hard to balance the work and the kids and you're trying to make sure you work out every day mm-hmm. and, yes. you and you know if you don't get it in it's okay mm-hmm. right you know? exactly I know but it is it's there's a lot that that weighs on us I think as women and as mothers constantly mm-hmm. and that will probably never go away but there's I'm sure mm-hmm. there's a biological reason yes. <laughs> <laughs> if someone could tell me what it is that's that why our children are alive <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> If we did not have that. <laughs> but, and and I'm sure that John is, you know, I know he's probably physically not as present yes. as some mm-hmm. fathers, but for good reason. But, you know, Abby and I bo- have very supportive husbands that are 50-50, you know, with us and all the things yeah. and I feel very lucky because even with that, it's still hard. Right. Right. right? Yes. So I can't imagine, Jamie, how you do it. It's, Props to you. It's been hard at times, but at the same time, we've been blessed to where when we moved, I don't know, our third time and we had Taylor, our oldest at four months old, we moved from Georgia to Texas. And what we did is we took my salary out of it. And because in my mind, I'm like, okay, I, I'm I'm in this alone. Mm-hmm. There's how do I don't know how I would have done it working. And but that's just me. Like I praise you working moms so much. But my anxiety could not handle it. You know, I'm like, I, I just knew what would be best for me. And we took my salary out and mm-hmm. we lived on peanut butter. And yeah. you know what I yeah. mean? But we were able to grow and do that. And I was able to be with the girls. And it did help me just handle things better, Mm -hmm. you know, because he was gone a lot. I mean, there were times it would be two weeks at a time and not living near family. That was tough. That's That's why I relied a lot on 
my page that lived across the street, you know, and her husband helped so much. But it is, it's part of the job. And that's yeah. what, you know, when I laugh because John literally gave me an ultimatum when we were dating for one month. He said, look, this is my career. And at the time he was coaching and he was like, this is my career. And I know you like me and I like you. And if this is going to continue, I need you to know that you're probably going to move. Because at Mm -hmm. the time we were in Louisiana. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know what? That sounds like fun. I'll move. You know, I didn't realize it would be like eight moves. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Was there a cap at the number of times you have to move? No, there were there were plenty of tears. There yeah. were plenty of tears. Yeah, but I just did it. It's day by day. It's day by day. <laughs> it is. Yeah, and it's you never look back. And I'm a very you know YOLO type of person. <laughs> if an opportunity presents itself mm-hmm. and it makes sense for your family and you personally, I would never want to look back and say we made the wrong decision exactly. by not doing something. Exactly. So yeah. once I think you get into that mentality, it's like yeah let's try it if it fails okay so what we fail we move on we exactly go in a different direction exactly but it's tough to do that (laughs) now I will tell you my mom's from New Zealand met my dad at 19 years old in Sydney Australia moved to the states they lived in Louisiana so my mom had no family and then my dad worked offshore seven and seven so he was home for seven days off for seven days so I didn't have your typical Mm-hmm. dad home all the time mm-hmm. so I personally never knew what it was like so I really think that 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 helped me with John and his career you know and not having him around right. yeah so, and I, I laugh I'm like good thank god because we're really happy now <laughs> if you were home all the time I don't know how that would work oh my gosh <laughs> tell our audience how they can find bookable or you you're gonna have events ongoing right we are always posting new events Mm -hmm. all the time and you can find us on instagram this is bookable and this is bookable.com and if you just i love it google bookable i'm doing it i can't wait i'm already thinking Ooh, i know yeah girls night yeah Yeah. exactly Exactly. okay let me have to take off she's not allowed to work that night (laughs) oh my gosh well thank you for being here you know i love you and i appreciate you you so much much i enjoy meeting you so much same and we can (laughs) talk wine after this all of it all of it We want to thank Caitlin Silverhoward for being on today. It was just such a joy to talk to her and hear from another mom and a woman in business who's doing it all. Yes, she was so impressive from the background of her husband and then being nine months pregnant and launching this business. That blew my mind. I know. She's incredible. Thank you guys so much for listening to Out of Bounds with Jamie and Abby. We are going to have so much fun. Cheers to us. I love you. We are going to have fun. Yes, we are. (laughs)